Oh, hey guys, how's it going? I guess it's been uh, it's been a hot minute since my last post uh, for a lot of reasons. One is still that my ankle is broken and it's hard to move around to do video editing uh, and setting up shots and whatnot. Uh, the other thing is I lost uh, my last video that I was going to post. I did a home Wi-Fi mesh upgrade and a Nest install and I was going to post that as another video but I lost that footage so that kind of sucked. I uh, also have done uh, some cool stuff coming up. We did an interview with uh, the YouTube channel artist from The Poor Investor, as well as the writer of The Chia Plot. So there's a three-way interview with me and those two guys that's going to be posted shortly after this video. In this video, we finally hit a quarter of a petabyte. We did it. A quarter of a petabyte of raw storage. Now, not all of it is for Chia but the raw storage amount is over a quarter of a petabyte now in those servers downstairs. So today we're going to be taking a look at how I shoved in the last little bit of uh, drives and we still have room for expansion actually. So I can still fit another four or five drives uh, in that Iceman case. Uh, so take a look at how we got to a quarter of a petabyte, which is awesome. Don't foresee myself doing too, too much more uh, on the, the upgrade front but uh, there is room for expansion in the current infrastructure. So let me know what you think, subscribe and like, and we'll see you after the video. Hey everyone again. Okay, so we're back in the server room and we have a bunch of crappy annoying external drives that are here that are attaching to Viper. Uh, Viper has a ton of room and we're going to be installing an additional 85 terabytes into Viper. Here's some more of the drives that some of these are open, but uh, we have a couple others here that are unopened. And uh, there's a second drive case that we're going to be putting in, along with some separate fans. Uh, we've already done the cable mod in the previous video uh, regarding to get extra power out of this power supply. And you can see here that uh, we have tons of space uh for extra drives but we did need a new drive cage so i picked up a drive cage that i hope is going to fit it will go in there hopefully once that's installed in there then we'll have uh four drives i think it contains four or five it might contain five um, but as you can see we've got room for an additional uh, four drives here, one, two, three, four. So an additional three here and an additional four here. Uh, and uh, we're gonna be doing that today. So I'm gonna be shucking all of those and installing these, uh, the remaining ones here. So that will have an additional 85 terabytes, which is going to give us over 250 terabytes of pure raw storage in this entire rack. Now, not all of it is attributed to uh, Chia, but the majority of it is attributed to Chia. And so I'm gonna have to take out that server and bring it upstairs and come join me for the ride. 14 terabytes of raw storage. Is one of the things that we're going to be installing today. Now this is a little bit of a clickbait situation. The top panels have all been installed uh, into Goose, which you guys have seen in a previous video of mine. Hopefully I can link it up at the top. Uh, that's 120 terabytes into Goose and we're adding another 85 terabytes into Iceman today. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be shucking these four drives opening up those two and shucking those and tossing them into some drive cages and eventually tossing them into Iceman. So he'll have about a hundred and I think 130 terabytes of storage. 
Uh, not all of it is attributed to Chia, but the most of it is attributed to Chia. And uh, so we're going to get started with uh, shucking these and covering up the pins for the white label hard drives, which I've demonstrated in my other videos. So here we go. Alright, so now that we have uh, all of the drives shucked, uh, I'm going to go through this in a little bit more detail because I didn't go through it in another one of my videos and I get a lot of questions about it. Uh, with these white label internal drives that you get from uh, most of the, you know, the USB connection drives, if they are white label, meaning they're white, uh, typically you can't just plug them into a regular power supply and have it uh, work and I found this out the hard way. But the solution to that is if you cover the third pin on the power supply, on the power, so that would be one, two, three. If you cover the third pin with duct tape, uh, not duct tape, sorry, electrical tape, uh, it then generates the proper power source information and it powers up the drive normally. You can actually cover up the first three uh, without having any issues because the first three are not uh, in use. So if you overlap on the second one or even in the third one, um, that's fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to do that here right now, uh, with some duct tape. And I'm just going to demonstrate to you how I do that. All right. So this might be a little difficult on camera, but basically I just cut a piece of, um, duct tape. Gosh, why do I keep calling it duct tape? A piece of electrical tape. And we're just going to wrap it around the third pin here. It's impossible to do through the viewfinder, but we've got it here. Nope. It's really hard to do through the viewfinder. Perfect. All right, so the third one is covered up, and there's a little piece of the second one covered up, which is also fine. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to leave a little bit of this showing on the other side. So we'll cut that nubbin off and then we're going to take some tweezers and press this around the end so that it's on both sides. So you can see now that it wraps around and is flapped on the other side. See that? Okay. And you're going to make sure that it's all the way down. Again, it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of one showing here, just as long as the third one's covered. So we're going to do that for the next uh, five drives. All right, now that we have all the drives shucked, we just need to shut this down and pull out the server. All right, so the plan for this is we're going to be pulling out this drive cage, uh, replacing it with, uh, well, filling it up with drives, all the drives that we have here, filling it up with drives and populating this space with a new drive cage, which we just bought. Hopefully it'll fit and we'll be able to attach the front fan to it and then filling this up with drives. So it's either vertical or horizontal. I don't know how this is going to fit, but in the meantime, we're going to take everything out and uh, start cable managing and repopulating things. So 
We'll time lapse this and wish me luck. We're also going to be removing these two fans and replacing them with uh, two pin fans like these. And yeah, so there's a lot of work to do. So let's get to it. Sweet. All right, so this is installed. We've got room for two more, which is great. In fact, we might even have room for a third down here, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, let me just... Yeah. These sleds allow you to have five in one of these drive cages. These ones only allow you to have four. So that's pretty cool. If I need to add one, two, three, four, I could probably add four more drives to here. Uh, provided I have enough SATA spaces. So now what we're going to do is we're going to be replacing these crappy Molex fans uh, with two of these uh, fan connectors. Uh, to the fan connectors, I got splitters and everything. So we're going to remove these, add those, and then we're going to start wiring this up. So yeah, sweet. Keep watching. Now, because I didn't have audio for this portion of the video, we opted to go with a 10 SATA expansion PCIe uh, expansion card. Previously in the Goose build, we used a 6 expansion card, a 6 SATA expansion card in that build. This one we opted out for a 10 slot expansion card, which I was a little bit weary about due to the complications that I had with the 6 slot expansion card. The 6 slot expansion card we had issues until we had to install the drivers which were fairly difficult to find. However, I wanted to go with the 10 SATA expansion card this time because we were going to have four extra drive spots in this build and in order to utilize all four of those extra drive spots for future expansion we were going to need a 10 slot SATA connection. So you can see here we have 
six plugged in and then we have an additional four that are still available which actually worked fairly well after we figured out uh, the, uh, t you needed to have a page file system set higher than normal in order to re see all of the drives that are connected through this PCIe lane. So uh, it's a little bit of a octopus mess right now and trying to find a way of cable managing them all so that it'll fit and work but uh, it ends up working so I'm pretty satisfied with that purchase. Okay, so we have everything plugged in finally. It looks like mayhem, but it's pretty much well as good as I can do with the confines that I have. So we utilized all of the uh, slots here that we had created in my earlier video, the extra SATA power connections, and we even had to do use one expansion to get the, the last drive powered up there. If we need some more power, for this, we're going to have to uh, do a SATA splitter on top of that. Uh, but there is room for an additional uh, at least two up here uh, and possibly even another two down there. But uh, for sure, two more cards can go in here. And we have that ability because this SATA expansion has an additional four ports on it. So we're going to boot it up and hope to see all the drives. But with my luck, it's never that easy. All right, wish me luck. All right, so just before I slowly went absolutely insane, I was able to get it all working. In fact, I had to reset the CMOS battery uh, in order to get this card working. And now it's seeing all the drives. I know it looks like an absolute mess. I might be able to do some tidy up now that it's working. But we've got our 124 gigs of total storage on here. So here are the new drives. This is the 14 terabyte drives. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, 14 terabyte drives. Then I've got two 10 terabytes and uh, eight terabyte and then two six terabytes here. So for a total of 124 terabytes of space and we have room for an additional actually two drives up there and possibly, in fact, uh, an additional two drives down there. Uh, maybe not there because we have my SSD, but we can take the SSD, double-sided tape to the wall, and then put in another two drives. So in fact, we could monopolize all four of these SATA ports here. We would have to do something about the power. Uh, we're utilizing all the power that we made in my previous video, where we're using all four of these uh, ports now, because I had extra cables and everything is finally working so that's awesome so i'm gonna put it back together probably do a little bit of uh, cable management here and uh, put it back in the rack all right so there it is a quarter of a petabyte is in these two servers we got iceman and goose there's a uh, 250 terabytes of storage in those two servers with room for expansion in Iceman for an additional four drives there. And we have a ton of space up in Viper as well. So stay tuned. I'm not too sure if I'll be doing a lot more upgrades, but definitely very happy with the outcome of this and no more USB wires everywhere and connections. It's all just in the rack and safely put away. So thanks for watching. Uh, we have a cool interview coming up with uh, the writer of the Chia plot as well as the YouTube channel um, The Poor Investor. So stay tuned for that and uh, watch some of my other videos that are posted around here. Anyways, thanks guys. We'll talk to you later.